I was a skeptic, to be honest. Ever since MKDS introduced retro tracks to the series, one thing has been a constant. Nintendo loves their GBA Bowser Castle levels. The SNES ones, not so much. Let's put this into context. When it comes to the 2D Bowser Castle levels, there's no particular reason why they had to choose to bring back a GBA one first, but for three games in a row, Nintendo chose to remake a GBA Bowser's Castle alongside one of the Mario circuits from SMK. Even when they barely brought back any other 2D courses, those were constants. MK8 was supposed to have MC4 and GBA BC4, but strangely, it didn't. But this didn't mean that there would be any alternative retro Bowser Castle levels. Mario Kart Tour has done a lot of first-time retro tracks, but it also brought back plenty that had returned already. There are eight track types from Super Mario Kart. All of them had returned in Tour in some capacity, except for one, and that was the SNES Bowser Castle levels. When there were three SNES options and only one GBA BC left, they changed the rules. Despite the fact that GBA BC 1 through 3 had returned in older games already, all of them came back in Tour. Nintendo also released RMX courses in Tour, or remix versions for most of these SNES courses, you know, the Chaco Islands, Cuba Beaches, etc. The exception to the rule was that they made the RMX Bowser Castle as well, but using the GBA courses as a base. So we lived in a reality where they started doing these remix courses based on the Super Nintendo game in Mario Kart Tour, but since there were no SNES Bowser Castles in the game, the only way they could do it was by using the GBA ones. It was hard to deny that the GBA Bowser Castle levels replaced the originals entirely. They just didn't exist in Nintendo anymore, and there was no other explanation. With one SNES course confirmed left in the booster course pass, I went through the options. Back in February, I posted this tweet about which track type was most likely to return. All I could rationalize was that a Bowser Castle level easily made the most sense to return, but in the last two decades, Nintendo has done nothing to make me actually believe it would happen. Additionally, the Vanilla Lake poster gave me enough reason to think that that would be the final SMK track, despite, you know, GBA Snowman's inclusion. It wasn't too far-fetched. You know, Sunshine Airport famously spoiled some courses that were later revealed in the base MK8 game as well. But this time, the poster was wrong. This morning, Nintendo revealed a new course for the next tour in MKT, and the only remaining hurdle for a SNES Bowser Castle was to get into tour. This, without a question, appears to be SNES Bowser Castle 3, which is awesome, because it makes complete sense as a fit in Deluxe. But the screenshot provided is very telling. It doesn't just make sense. This will be a Wave 5 booster course track. Initially, it felt like this was just more preferential treatment for the GBA levels, letting them act as replacements. But in actuality, this left the door wide open for SNES Bowser's Castle 3 to get the GBA remake glow-up treatment instead. And I think I even see a section that looks like an anti-gravity section. Now this is a role reversal, and it would make no sense to do this if this wasn't the pick for Wave 5. So for the first time in 30 years, one of the original Bowser Castle levels is being properly remade, and almost certainly will be in MK8 to fulfill the complete Bowser Castle void we currently have. I know that there's some comments guy who's already typing up how, you know, it was remade in Super Circuit already, and I'm aware. That literally doesn't count, though. The Super Circuit track remakes were like bringing back the Kanto region in gold and silver for Pokemon. This right here is the actual remake. Miss me with that. Before I get to the implications that this has on the rest of the game, let's not gloss over what it means directly. This is a massive win for the game, assuming it holds and gets the nod. Most SMK courses we've seen as wasted slots, and this will not be that. It's a first-time retro, they revamped it quite a lot, it isn't flat, and it looks interesting in competitions too with all the split paths and lack of off-road cuts. In my opinion, getting this and avoiding Vanilla Lake especially is the best case scenario and is already boosting my excitement for Wave 5 a bit. Honestly, it would have been cool if they surprised us like they did with DS Mario Circuit in the trailer, but perhaps the surprise will be a different track. But let's talk about what I think happens for the rest of Wave 5 now. What are the new implications? Well, this almost feels like it deconfirms the rest of the SNES courses, including a Vanilla Lake. This calls into question the credibility of the Vanilla Lake poster on Coconut Mall, which means we should be equally questioning Dino Dino Jungle's ad as well. This doesn't deconfirm DDJ, of course as there are still three GCN slots left. But for those who were using the posters as evidence, you've lost that claim now. While Snowland logically feels like the main reason Vanilla Lake wouldn't return, I don't think there is one course in particular that would eliminate Dino Dino Jungle. However, Riverside Park is a recent jungle-themed track, and we may see a new DK-themed map release in the future, with many expecting Diddy or Funky Kong to come alongside it. The addition of BC3 also satisfies the need for a new Bowser-themed course, 
making an original Bowser track less likely or necessary. I said I felt very good about Koopa Cave and Sunset Wilds being in Wave 5, and this makes me feel even stronger about both, actually. This is because the chance of a SNES Koopa Beach and Chaco Island has now shrunk to near 0%. I was right about an Athens course being added, but I predicted it in Wave 6 initially and got the name wrong. With Athens Dash now released, and me maintaining belief that Vancouver will be a Wave 6 release, it feels unlikely that they would push it back since it would give them more of a buffer period for the final tour originals to put in Wave 5. However, that brings us to a predicament. Athens is a ruins-based course, but Piranha Plant Cove kind of is as well. I now wonder if that pushes it back to Wave 6 or potentially holds Dry Dry Ruins out of the DLC entirely. Regardless of whether Athens or Cove is chosen, they will need to make two new tour tracks in the next few months, unless both get in. But I think it will be Athens that makes the cut now. I believe Sunset Wilds will be in the Feather Cup, and that's its original location, according to data mines, and I feel like it fits the theming there as well. Koopa Cape, however, I think moves to the second cup. The reason for this is simple. I now believe that they're just putting the simplest retro courses the second course in each wave now. Koopa Cape is not going to be that. However, Piranha Plant Cove kind of shares some ideas of Koopa Cape with the underwater sections. It kind of makes me think that they save it for Wave 6. There are also multiple routes on Cove, which is unique for the non-city courses. It might make sense as a final wave course. So I'll stick it alongside Bowser Castle 3 and the Double Cherry Cup. This leaves us with one more retro course being a GameCube track, and there are a lot of options. But before I talk about the Double Dash tracks, I need to talk about MKDS ones first. And before that even, I need to talk about MK64. Yeah, we're overanalyzing this, so hear me out. Many people thought N64 Wario Stadium would be in the booster pass because it's the only N64 course to never be remade. I never subscribed to that theory. This is because I think they need it for the next game whenever that comes out. While the booster course pass is reselecting already done retros, I still believe that MK9's base game will be all first time retros again. While most fan favorites returned in the past, they're still going out of their way to give forgotten courses the spotlight as well and I believe it remains a priority to them, and the fan favorites are what they're just using to sell people in the DLC. This is where we get to MKDS though, because it's in a very weird spot right now. There are only three courses left to be remade, and they are very strange ones. The first course, Figure 8 Circuit, and the Bowser Castle and Rainbow Road courses. And back a while ago, I would have rationalized that, you know, DS Rainbow Road would come back in MK11, but I think with the future of DLC and all that, the only thing we can reasonably predict is the base game for MK9. But the options are much more limited now with the booster course pass bringing back Shroom Ridge and Mario Circuit. DS A Rainbow Road will not be the pick in MK9 because it is not next up in line. GBA Rainbow Road is. Figure 8 Circuit could work, but I feel like it would be a very lame sell for the only returning DS course to be this one. They really should have used it over Toad Circuit in the booster course pass to get rid of it in MK8, where at least people would joke about the 8 course being in MK8, but now it's awkwardly hanging around. If they thought it was too bland to put in the DLC, it feels too bland to be a standalone DS track after this pass, honestly. This literally leaves us with just DS Bowser's Castle, or maybe it and Figure 8 Circuit, because I could see this course being a standalone DS course. But why does this all matter? Well, the GameCube track pool is also in a very awkward spot for the next game. GC and Rainbow Road is also not next in line, and if DS Bowser's Castle is in the game, which I feel like it should be, it's hard to see why the GameCube Bowser's Castle would be in the next game. So it would give us the following options for MK9. Mushroom City and Wario Coliseum. And keep in mind, we think that N64 Wario Stadium would be returning in this scenario too. So the conclusion I've reached here is that Mushroom City would be a valuable course to have hanging around for MK9. They've kind of backed themselves into a corner with the GameCube and DS courses. So on a second thought, would they want to use up this course in the booster pass, especially with, you know, the overload of city tracks? and I'm leaning no, to be honest. Back on the booster pass, GC and Daisy Cruiser appears to be a shoe in and I think they'd select one of DK Mountain or Dino Dino Jungle, but the most feasible options after that is a Traffic Course or GC and Bowser's Castle, and we now think a Bowser's Castle level is coming to wave five. And then I thought about the whole simple course in slot two thing again, you know, Riverside Park, Toad Circuit, Mario Circuit 3, etc. And I realized that Mushroom Bridge makes a ton of sense as course two of wave five. It wouldn't be particularly extravagant, but it'd get the job done and be the first time the course is playable online. There are allegedly tour assets of the GCN traffic courses as well. I think this track is announced in 8D before tour, and it's the surprise track of the wave. As for the other courses, I'll stick with Madrid and double down on a Donkey Kong themed course that brings Diddy Kong and maybe Funky Kong to the game. Wave 4 had three cities and a spin-off themed original in Yoshi's Island, 
and Wave 5 will also have three cities, so why not give it another spin-off themed original that also introduces more popular returning characters? Besides, we might not even get Dino Dino or DK Mountain. You know, the Dino Dino Jungle poster likely means nothing. Maybe there's a world where they select Daisy Cruiser, Mushroom Bridge, and GCN BC to proceed Wii Rainbow Road. This would actually be a good strategy for clearing up DS Bowser's Castle space in MK9. Or maybe Daisy Cruiser is just Wave 5 like everyone else seems to think because, you know, summertime. I'm just not sure that actually means anything. Anyways, here are my updated Wave 5 predictions. As much as I'd like to update the Wave 6 ones, there are too many variables right now and my character theory might be broken, so I want to learn more in regard to that first. I will say a few things though. I'm still not 100% sold on all of these originals in Wave 6. If the Wave 5 original course is something we aren't expecting at all, it is probably a sign that Wave 6 has a lot of originals. But for those wanting retros outside of what we expect, the two Wave 6 GCN courses are Wii Rainbow Road, hope is not completely dead yet. Dry Dry Ruins and Yoshi Desert have outside shots, perhaps. Maybe if I'm wrong and Daisy Cruiser gets in Wave 5, there'd still be a chance for Daisy Circuit. And maybe there could still be one more DS64 or MK7 course. Another thing to keep your eye out on, if Vancouver Velocity somehow gets into Wave 5, which I don't think it will, they're doing something crazy, I feel like, because that would be clearing up space in the final wave. Anyways, I'll be back with another video the second I believe there are any new developments. If you don't want to miss it, subscriptions are always appreciated. So I'll see you in the next one, and as always, thanks for watching.